اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Dear students of 4th year MBBS, today we will discuss non-microbial keratitis and corneal degenerations. Opening objective of this lecture are that at the end of the lecture, you know the symptoms, clinical presentation, diagnosis and treatment of different non-microbial keratitis. And you also know about arcus, senilis and juvenilis. Band and Lippert keratopathy. Non-microbial keratitis are those keratitis which are not due to infective organisms. We will discuss today Morin's ulcer, neurotrophic or neuroparalytic keratitis, exposure keratitis, collectanular keratitis, filamentary keratitis, and photokeratitis. A Moran's ulcer is a rare ulcer which is characterized by superficial, progressive, circumferential, peripheral stromal ulceration which later having central spread. Etiology of this ulcer is unknown but autoimmune mechanism may play a role and degenerative process due to ischemia of the cornea and autoimmune lysis of epithelium that release the collagenolytic, collagenolytic enzymes. As far as symptoms of this ulcer are concerned, there may be moderate to severe pain, photophobia and blood vision that is mostly due to astigmatism. Now come to the clinical presentation. Initially there is a peripheral ulceration of superficial one-third of stoma with variable epithelial loss and then progressive circumferential and central stromal thinning. Ultimately may lead to vascularization of bed of the ulcer and in the healing stage there may be marked thinning of the cornea with vascularization and scarring and complications of this ulcer are severe astigmatism. It may lead to perforation after a minor trauma. Secondary bacterial infection may be dreadful, cataract and glaucoma are the other complications. As far as treatment of the Moran's ulcer is concerned, we use topical steroids very frequently initially and then we tapered in months. We may use the topical uh, immunosuppressive drops like cyclosporin up to 2%, artificial tears and acetylcysteine uh, mucolytic agents up to 10% and the conjunctival resection may be helpful around the lien. In severe mm, manifestation of the disease, we use the systemic immunosuppressive agents like cyclosporin, prednisolone, methotrexate, and azathioprine. So, we can also use systemic collagenase inhibitors like doxycycline, and for lamellar keratectomy may be helpful and for visual rehabilitation keratoplasty may be needed. Now we will discuss briefly the neurotrophic or neuroparatitic keratitis. Pathogenesis of this ulcer is loss of innervation to cornea. So this uh, due to loss of innervation of the cornea the neuronal influences causes intracellular edema, exfoliation of the epithelial cells, impairment of epithelial healing, so epithelial breakdown and ulceration occur. The etiology may be the damage to the fifth cranial nerve or trigeminal ganglion, 
certain systemic diseases causes the loss of innervation like diabetes mellitus leprosy and certain ocular diseases like herpes simplex keratitis and herpes zoster keratitis chemical burn causing this uh, loss of uh, innervation and refractive corneal surgery but it may be congenital due to familial dysautonomia or hereditary sensory neuropathy how can we diagnose the case we test the corneal sensation they are reduced as far as clinical presentation is concerned initially the interpalpebral punctate keratopathy appear then epithelial opacification and edema persistent epithelial defect then this enlargement of epithelial defect with stromal edema and stromal corneal melting and ultimately it may cause if untreated perforation may result due to secondary infections the treatment of this type of uh, keratitis is as usual we use the topical lubricants and we protect the ocular surface just by simple tapping of the lids we induce protective doses lateral or central tarsorephy or silicone contact lens may protect the epithelium and in severe cases non healing ulcers we use the amniotic membrane graft now we will discuss the exposure keratitis the pathogenesis of this uh, ulcer is due to incomplete lid closure causes may be facial palsy reduced muscle tone like uh, the comatose patient and parkinsonism there may be mechanical causes like eyelid scarring or tight facial skin or it may be due to abnormality of glow position as in case of severe proptosis or in exophthalmos or in severe anophthalmos the diagnosis we usually the patient have the symptoms of dry eye as far as signs are concerned initially there are punctate epithelial changes usually in the inferior cornea as this part of the cornea is mostly exposed due to non closure of the lids then epithelial breakdown occur and ultimately stromal melting and secondary infection causes the ulceration and inferior fibrovascular changes may be present what is the treatment we give the lubricants by artificial tears ointment at night and close the lids by simple taping bandage silicone contact lens may be used to protect the uh, cornea and gold weights inserted in the upper lid which causes artificial ptosis to protect the cornea in severe cases we may use the lateral tarsorephy or the conjunctival flap uh, can be used in uh, cases where the ulcer refuses to heal and of course we do manage the proptosis and sometimes we have to do the orbitotomy now flectanular keratitis it's a self limiting disease caused by delayed hypersensitivity reaction to staphylococcal antigens and this cause is usually present in developed countries but in developing countries where tuberculosis is prevalent you must also look for tuberculosis and helminthic infections
and systemic associations uh, of this disease are rosacea. And this disease is usually present in children and young adults. And patients present with pain, photophobia, lacrimation, and blepharospasm. As far as signs are concerned, initially there is a small white nodule with hyperemia on limbus. Hyperemia around this small white nodules. So limbal flectin may extend onto the cornea and then it may lead to severe thinning and vascularization. And when the healing occurs, it left behind um, a triangular limbal base scar. And you must rule out tuberculosis. In our country, we must rule out the tuberculosis. And treatment, as it is a hypersensitive reaction, you will use topical steroids, tetracyclines, where we suspect uh, release of collagenolytic enzymes. And of course, we have to treat the associated chronic blepharitis with steroid antibiotic ointments and look for the hygiene of the layers. Now come to the filamentary keratitis. It is a common condition due to so many diseases and it resulting into discomfort, a loose epithelium is there with the deposition of mucus and cellular debris and the causes of filaments are most common cause is the keratoconjunctivitis sicca, dry eye, where tear film is disturbed, particularly the aqueous part of the tear film is uh, decreased. And it is common in contact lens wearer, mostly the, for the wearer who wear the contact lens for a long time. Recurrent erosion syndrome, superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis, and the bullous keratopathy, particularly the pseudophagic bullous keratopathy, may be the cause. Other causes are neurotrophic keratopathy, essential blepharospasm, and where we have the patching of the eye for a prolonged period. How we diagnose? this uh, keratitis usually the pre patient present with foreign body sensation redness I mean, circumcorneal congestion and photophobia as far as signs are concerned you look for degenerated epithelial cells and mucus strands attached with cornea and these filaments stains with rose bengal you can appreciate in this picture that filaments are stained well with the rose bengal. So the epithelial defect at the base of the filaments usually present and in long-standing cases they may form plaques. How, we, how can we manage the filamentary keratitis? Initially the general outline is the treat underlying cause as the dry eye we give the artificial tears stop unnecessary medication and the specific treatment for filaments are we remove the filaments mechanic by excise, excising the filaments and we use the mucolytic agents like acetyl cysteine 5 to 10 percent non-steroid anti-inflammatory drop drugs hypertonic saline drops and ointment can be used and bandage contact lens having high oxygen permeability may be helpful. Now what is photokeratitis? Photokeratitis is a condition where ultraviolet rays causes the damage to the epithelium and erosions. It is usually due to arc light 
welding when an individual see the arc light welding with naked eye and or does not use the protective glasses when one starts welding or the passer by uh, stop a while and look at the welding arc it causes damage to the epithelium usually start four to six hours after exposure and this damage may be um, present in um, snow blindness reflected uv rays causing corneal erosions reflection from the snow as far as symptoms are concerned patient present with very very severe pain patient may be yelling with the pain also lacrimation and photophobia and severe blepharospasm is there patient is unable to open the eyes and he, he you are unable to do examine the patient so as far as signs are concerned it is very very difficult to examine the patient with severe blepharospasm you have to put uh, a drop of alkane propyracane hydrochloride into the eye then of course the pain will be reduced patient open the eyes and then you can examine the patient then you will find the conjunctival and circumcorneal congestion conjunctival chemosis may be there and epithelial erosions which stain with the fluorescein and uh, as far as treatment is concerned pro prophylaxis is the best treatment always use our protective glasses uv protected glasses which cut off the ultraviolet and infrared rays and while doing the welding one must use the protective mirror of protective glasses once the photokeratitis occur you um, the treatment is uh, treat the pain with analgesics cold compressors astringent drops cycloplegic drops where you paralyze the ciliary muscle and it gives the comfort to the patient and put antibiotic ointment in the eye and pad the both eyes for 24 hours as this condition is due to ultraviolet light damaging the healthy epithelium and healthy epithelium re-epithelialize re within 24 to 48 hours this was all about the non-microbial keratitis now we will discuss briefly few corneal degenerations arcus senilis arcus juvenilis lipid keratopathy band shape keratopathy spheroidal degeneration what is the arcus senilis it is the bilateral annular lipid infiltration of cornea in old persons there is no symptom central cornea is clear and when you examine the patient you find lipid stromal deposition in the superior initially it starts in the superior and inferior perilimbal cornea and ultimately it forms a band about one millimeter wide and this uh, white band have mm, the center border and the peripheral border the central border is diffuse and peripheral is sharp sharply demarcated from the clear cornea in between the limbus and this band as far as treatment is concerned no treatment is required as it is a innocuous non uh, uh, condition having giving no problems just a aging problem But when you find the arcus in a younger age group, 
it may be associated with familiar and non-familiar dyslipoproteinemias and this arcus may be unilateral present in carotid disease or ocular hypotony whenever you find the arcus in a younger age group you always investigate for serum lipid profile what is the lipid keratopathy it has two types primary and secondary primary is rare white or yellow stromal deposits of cholesterol fats and phospholipids but there is no vascularization in secondary lipid keratopathy it is more common and it is associated with previous ocular disease it results into coronal vascularization causes are the herpes simplex and herpes zoster disky form keratitis and uh, what treatment we can offer we can do the organ laser photocoagulation of the feeder vessels and the needle point cartridge but, but for visual rehabilitation penetrating keratoplasty is the answer now we will discuss briefly the band keratopathy a band keratopathy is a common condition having deposition of calcium in bowman's layer epithelial basement membrane and anterior stroma the causes may be ocular causes or metabolic causes as far as ocular causes are concerned it is post chronic anterior uveitis thysis bulbi silicon oil in the anterior chamber chronic corneal edema due to any cause and severe chronic keratitis as far as metabolic causes are concerned it is the increased serum calcium and phosphorus level hyperuricemia and chronic renal failure may be the cause it may be a hereditary condition in family cases and what are the signs of band keratopathy initially there is a peripheral interpalpebral calcification then it gradually spread to the center forming a band like chalky plaque ultimately it may become nodular and elevated once it it become nodular and elevated epithelial breakdown may be there and treatment is only indicated when it threatened the vision and the patient is uncomfortable treatment is chelation we scraped off the cornea with the mm, scalpel 15 number blades and rub the cornea with cotton taped with edta to remove the calcium in this case the reepithelialization takes about 7 days as the epithelium is not healthy normally whenever there is epithelial problem in a healthy case it uh, regenerate within 24 to 48 hours but here the epithelialization is mm, much more delayed keratectomy may be helpful or in visual rehabilitation lamellar keratoplasty may be needed now lastly we will discuss briefly the spheroidal denation it is a bilateral degenerative condition of unknown cause but uh, ultraviolet light exposure um, may be the culprit so the men working in outdoors are um, mostly affected it may cause visual impairments when you examine the patient initially there you find the amber colored granules in superficial stroma peripheral interpalpebral cornea ultimately increasing opacification and central spread it may become nodular and surrounding um, stromal uh, edema causing the haze 
the treatment as far as treatment is concerned you must use the uv protected glasses to, to cut tail particularly those who work outdoor then once the disease is there superficial keratectomy may be helpful but lamellar keratoplasty may be needed for visual rehabilitation so ladies and gentlemen this was all about uh, non microbial keratitis and uh, corneal degenerations i am thankful to you for patient listening now i am giving you the assignment please send it the number given below and email address please mention symptoms and clinical presentation of photo and filamentary keratitis what is the treatment of non microbial keratitis please give general outline thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for patient listening grateful